I'm Jen Schmidt here with Road Trail Run, and today we're going to be hearing about the new On Super Trail Shoot. So yeah, maybe you can tell us who you are and what you do at On and, and how this shoe came to be. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Sergi. I'm part of the product team at On. I uh, live in Switzerland, based in Zurich. And I've been with On already almost six years, um, but I transitioned into the product team around three years ago. Um, there was There was a whole reset in the organization they were trying to push for a more credible outdoor uh, vertical um and then they basically redid the whole team and that's when i came to join this new team great and earlier today in the panels you were telling us about the outsole so tell us about what makes the outsole special and and how you developed it i think it's interesting because in in the panel i didn't really have time to go um deeper but maybe we can discuss it a bit more in here um so we use one of the road running uh technologies called fea which is basically what the running team used for the cloud surfer to define the shape of the cavities but in our case uh we were pretty happy with the compound of the of the outsole but we didn't do a lot of work until then on the outsole pattern right so with this software, I mean, FEA is sort of an algorithm. Um, it helped us to basically track down some of the options, potential options. So we looked at the density of the lags, the geometry of the lags, um, spacing as well, right? And the orientation even. And all of these options that we generated through a 3D software, we made them run through this algorithm. And then it gave us um, some idea on, on which could perform better and which type of terrain. And then from there, basically, we took those shoes and we went outside on the field to test them, test them out. Yeah. And tell me about that field testing process. How many athletes do you have testing the shoes and what does that look like when you work with them and get feedback? Yeah, so, I mean, I don't have the, the right number in, in mind, but I would say around 10, 10 athletes. At the end, we are not able to open all the sizes for all athletes. So for this project, we started with just two sizes, one women, uh, female size um, opening mold, and then another for men's which was a us9 and um, so we tested it with um antoine chavolan uh, jeff cold claudia trems which is one of our uh, spanish trail athletes um and it's basically um i think we've mentioned it before during the panel talk it, it, it it's a lot about trust uh, and i think we developed this network with the athletes in which there is a lot of trust in which they can basically uh, give input and feedback without feeling that they are you know they are doing their job right they are judging uh, a product that they need to run on and and we basically started with this uh, first prototype that we developed in Zurich. So they got the chance to run on the on the first races. And Juan Chabolan, I think he ran Marathon du Mont Blanc, a 90k Marathon du Mont Blanc on a first prototype made in made in Zurich. And we were actually pretty afraid because like we didn't know if that was going to hold on, right? Um, so that was a big that was a big day. Um, but then obviously the development process moves on and then we go into different stages that we call well they have a name internally but like stage one stage two and stage three to make it easier and then over these iterations we always touch point with the touch base with the athletes and we get their feedback and i think in this project specifically after the stage two the only thing we were reworking were basically durability details on how to make the radius uh, maybe a bit rounder so that it doesn't delaminate or stuff like that so I, I'd say we had something pretty special already at the beginning. And then at LR2, we call it internally LR2. Yeah, the shoe was almost ready. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to go back to something you said. You said you had the men's and the women's shoes. I've seen a lot of the trail super shoes are unisex right now. So can you tell me a little bit about what's the difference? I think what I meant there is that we open different sizes. We don't make any difference between uh, okay. male or female so shoes. Um, shoes yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's the same shoe, but different sizing. Yeah. yeah. And let's talk to you about the plate because that's yeah. pretty unique here, right? That combination of nylon and fiberglass yes. versus carbon. How did you, what kinds of materials did you test and how did you end up with that one? Yeah, I mean, this is interesting because one of the things we found out at the very beginning um, when analyzing the whole course of UTMB was, hey, people are slowing down, right? So uh, at the end, it was, uh, it was a matter of efficiency, not, not that much about speed. Although we wanted to do a fast shoe, uh, we also wanted to have the most efficient shoe out there. And that's why we focused a lot on efficiency. Therefore, all the lab uh, testing that we did was basically pointed towards energy consumption and oxygen consumption. Um, so we had our athletes basically running on the treadmill, uphill, downhill. And we tested eight different prototypes at the very beginning in Zurich. Some of them had a carbon plate, uh, some others a nylon. 
Then there was a combination with nylon and fiberglass. Uh, and then at the end, we realized that with carbon plated shoes, especially on the uphill section, the body was using a lot of oxygen. So it was really demanding energy wise. And that's why we went away from, from carbon plated shoes. That's so interesting to think about um, that it's this really data driven ap approach to material yeah. and looking at the efficiency there because I think there's so much conversation about the carbon plates right now and and this is the first one I've seen that's really taking that approach to figuring out what materials are most efficient over different terrain. Yeah, and I think what is interesting as well is that obviously data points you in the right direction, but as I mentioned before, in road with with sports science and lab data, you can always uh, or almost go to a final product, right? But mm -hmm. In trail, there is so much noise and, and, and I mean, the terrain is different. There are so many things happening that you need to test also with the athletes outside on the field um, and especially take that subjective feedback as part of the basically, yeah, just how everything ties together with the data, actually. So Jeff was saying he went through eight different versions of history going back and forth with you to, yes. to arrive at this one. Yeah. Well, great. And what are you most excited about that's, that's still to come? Are there any other shoes in the works you can tell us about? Well, we're already working on the next iteration of, of this, yeah, for 27. So um, that's, a that's a long process, exactly, yes. Um, but we are also working on, on other shoes that are going to come up in 26, which I feel like it's going to complement really well the quiver of shoes that Jeff was talking about. I think at the beginning in 2022, uh, beginning of, let, let's say, this reset that we, that we did with, with On, right? we didn't have all the all the tools and i think now we are reaching a point in which we feel confident with our athletes to have like a good quiver of tools for them to be equipped uh, in in different races ultra distance short distance races as well i mean we've seen patrick and philemon flying down on the on the broken arrow curves uh, so i'm sure there's going to be also some shoes along uh, that direction as well mm -hmm. and this one was designed with utmb in mind right yeah, it's interesting because this one was, uh, I mean, we basically analyzed the whole course of UTMB, but it, at the end, what we are finding out with all the feedback that we're getting and that we've been getting with the athletes is that it can actually perform as well at Western States. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have a really well balanced uh, super shoe. Um, yeah, I think we, we took the right decisions um, thinking about that efficiency question that I mentioned at the very beginning. So we did sacrifices maybe on, on weight or on speed to actually meet the, the efficiency topic that I was discussing with your runs. Yeah. Very cool. Well, we'll look forward to seeing it out on the trails. Yeah, hopefully you get to try it as well. Yeah. Thanks Good. so much. I appreciate it.